Hayden asked, what is the ceiling for Auburn in 2022 after this Harson situation? Well, I want to go back to a list that I read you a second ago. So let's pretend that everything's great at Auburn. This is always how I have to classify the Auburn experience. Let's pretend everything's great at Auburn. Let's pretend there's no drama whatsoever behind the scenes and the administration hadn't made a mockery of the program over the past month. Let's pretend all's well and good, sunshine and rainbows. You still got to play Georgia and Bama and A&M and LSU every year. And then you've also got to play Arkansas every year. You got to play Ole Miss every year. You got Penn State coming in this year. This is the hardest job in major college football, even when things are great. Things are not great, friends, on the plains. I know you and I haven't spoken. I said that quick. I know you and I have not spoken since Brian Harson was retained. Weirdest headline ever. Uniquely Auburn, that headline. But this is where we are right now. Brian Harson is the head coach at Auburn. Now, as I said, to provide context, when this whole thing was going on, I guess we can't call it a scandal because there was nothing there, but when the uh, pseudo scandal, the Twitter scandal, if you will, was going on, I said, I, I think we need to remember on the off chance that he's retained, which he ended up being, you need to remember he's still got hires to make. They still need an offensive coordinator. Uh, they, they have still got the hardest, one of the hardest schedules in the country coming up. Uh, the recruiting was flat this past cycle, according to rankings. Now, you never know how a class actually pans out, so it's not fair to grade the class yet. Uh, my opinion was recruiting's well off pace compared with the teams they have to play. That's my, that's my assessment on the Auburn recruiting situation. And then they got the schedule to play this year. So let's look at this. How many of these teams will they be favored against? They won't be favored against Georgia and Bama. I don't think they'll be favored against A&M. No, they will not be favored against LSU. I would not expect them to be favored against Ole Miss or Arkansas. Uh, Penn State at home is going to be a very, very competitive game. They do open with Mercer, though. You know, what's funny is the FCS crowd out there, uh, they will look at Auburn's schedule, even with all those landmines on there, and they'll say, shame on Auburn for scheduling Mercer. And to that crowd, I just reserve an entire segment on another show because I don't have time for it right now. I mean, my, like, yes, yes, let's replace Mercer with UNLV. All of a sudden, there's no more FCS team on there. That legitimizes Auburn's schedule all of a sudden. Spare me. So, I mean, we're looking at this list. There are going to be dogs in like six or seven games. What would success be here? What is success? Is there a number? I was on with uh, the next round with Jim Dunaway and Ryan Brown and Lance Taylor and those guys the other day. We were talking about Auburn, and I asked, what's the number? If you were to put seven and five on this schedule, is that good enough? Or do you need eight and four? Or is there, is there a magic number of wins that are needed? I never believe in that, but that doesn't change it from being the approach for a lot of powerful people. That is a brutal schedule. And so the best case scenario, I, I think nine wins would be a miracle. I mean, I think that we don't know who the quarterback there is. We've got a bunch of guys like T.J. Finley and Zach Calzada's coming in. There are a bunch of guys who have been backup options at other places that have transferred in. There is no alpha. There's no guarantee on that roster, even at quarterback. Uh, they are void of elite skill at receiver. There's so much churn here that to go back to when all this was going on, I tried to remind people, if he's retained, It'll be one of the stiffest challenges any coach has in America, even if things are good. But if things are dramatic behind the scenes, it's going to be a no-win situation. This is really, really difficult. So uh, the best case was the question. I think the ceiling, I mean, the absolute ceiling would be like nine wins. And we're going to obviously talk about this more in the summer, the best, worst, most likely scenarios. You find me nine wins there, I, you probably got my vote for Brian Harson for Coach of the Year early in the process.